So make.com has officially launched MCP functionality and in the next couple minutes, we're gonna be walking through exactly how you can set this up step by step. Before we dive into that, let's show what this actually looks like as an example. So in front of me, I have my Claude free desktop app open and I have this invoice in front of me and I wanna pull up things like the name of the person and the total and the tax and all that kind of stuff and send that into make.com so that I can remove the line items and then enter that into a Google spreadsheet kind of like this. And so inside Claude, I've asked it to please remove all the line items and then send it to my MCP server to send over to Google Sheets. And so you can see right now that it's extracting the data and then it's going to go ahead and think about what data we need. It's going to reference the data that we are asking it to send over, like the first name and the last name and the email and the price and the tax and all that kind of stuff. So it's going to pull that information out and then it's going to send that over to us so that we can display that in our particular Google Sheets, just like we see here. And so this is kind of the MCP server trigger that we're going to be building out today. We can build this out in, first of all, Claude, we can build it out in Cursor, and we can also build it out in ChatGPT. And we're going to be going over ChatGPT and Claude in this particular video. Now, let's talk about what MCP actually is and why it matters. So model context protocol in make.com essentially allows you to connect ChatGPT and Claude and Cursor into 2000 or more applications. So you can think about it like this. Inside Claude, as an example, we are sending a message to hit the MCP server, which is essentially processing that information, understanding, hey, what information to send over to our make.com scenario. And we can have as many scenarios in here as we want. So in our previous example, we were just taking out data and we are sending it over to Google Sheets. But of course, you could do thousands and thousands of other things. The options are endless. Now, let's talk about what MCP actually is. It's an API standard for AI agents. It allows them to communicate effectively between one another. So like from Claude to make.com or from ChatGPT to make.com and it allows it to connect with tools like Gmail or Google Calendar, Sheets and so on and so forth. That feels really dense to <laughs> read out. So let me kind of simplify this as much as possible. You can think about it like um, kind of like Google Sheets. This is a way to standardize information uh, in a like a table. Or you can think about it like HTML, which is a standardized way of presenting information on the web. I mean, if we open up this particular web application right here, this is all HTML, right? That's built the entire web app. Or if you're using make.com, you're probably pretty familiar with JSON data, which is the backbone of make. Anytime you send data, it's being sent through JSON, okay? And so in a nutshell, MCP is just another framework. Now, there's three main key features that I want to go over. The first is tool discovery. So what I mean by that is like, let's say that Google Calendar rolls out a new tool. Instead of waiting for make.com to implement it after like a couple weeks or months, it's going to automatically become available to you through MCP. So the moment it's released, you're going to have access to it. That's feature number one. Feature number two is merging methods together. So let me break this down because this is one of the most important things that MCP does. So let's say you're dealing with Google Calendar, okay? And you want to be able to have maybe an AI agent that is able to create calendar events, search for calendar events, delete calendar events, and update calendar events. The issue is, is that conventionally with make.com, you'd have to create another module for every single thing that you want to do. Create, update, delete, and search. But with MCP, what it does is it merges all of those into one. So instead of having to create multiple, like five or six or seven, you can just have all of them in one. To, and, and that one module will be able to add, update, delete, and search. And the reason why that's the case is because of key feature number three over here. Essentially, what this does is it processes natural language. So if you're like, hey, I want you to add an event, it's like, hmm, what do we want to do? probably add. If you're like, hey, I want to delete an event, it's going to be like, huh, okay, well, he said delete, so we should probably go ahead and delete that. So, you know, it kind of takes your your words and it, it just does the action that you want it to do. And also, it's going to generate these schemas for you. So I think this is really, really powerful. So no more do you have to go into these complicated like HTTP kind of nodes and build out all these kind of stuff, all, all these things. If you're beginning in make.com or even if you're, you know, you've been using it for quite a while, this is kind of a scary node because it just can take a long time to get it right. Anything that goes wrong slightly will cause a lot of errors and it just sucks to deal with. Now, instead of you having to put in like URLs and the 
method and the headers and the query strings and body and all that kind of stuff. Long gone are those days. MCP is going to remove that from you. All you have to do is type a message. And when you type that message out, it's going to understand exactly what it is that you're looking for. So if we kind of take a look at our example with Claude here, you'll notice that I didn't give it some defined structure. I didn't say, hey, I want you to pull out exactly this and this format and all that kind of stuff. Essentially, it just knew what to do and specifically knew what to do because on the receiving end, we labeled first name, last name, email and price and all that kind of stuff. And so it just knows what information to pull out in pretty much natural language. You don't really have to go ahead and create all of the boilerplate when it comes to things like HTTP methods, like the URL method, all that kind of stuff. Cool. So in a nutshell, that's it. The reality inside make.com is that it's really good at sending data from apps like Claude, ChatGPT, and Cursor into make.com as a trigger. So let's go ahead. Let's build this out from the ground up, both in OpenAI, and then we're going to switch over to Claude and build it in both. So on the at the bottom left of the screen, what we're going to do is we're going to hit our profile here, okay? And we're going to zoom over to MCP access over here. And once inside, I want to create a token. We're going to hit the plus button, make sure we flip this over to MCP token here, and we can just call this whatever we want, maybe like MCP server, and we're good to go. You'll notice that it's created a unique key for us, and this is what we're going to use to connect into our um, OpenAI and Claude instances. So I'll go ahead, I'll copy this out, and what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the website platform.openai.com just like it's spelled up top here. And if you haven't done so already, I would recommend creating an account. And once inside, we'll hit the dashboard here. We'll hit chat on the sidebar. And I want to create a new chat. Now, quite simply, all we have to do to get this up and running is we need to hit tools over here. So create MCP server. We'll hit add and we'll enter in that URL that we just created over here. Right, So we're going to copy this URL. We're going to paste it right in the URL here. We'll label it. So maybe like I want to call this op uh, make MCP server. And we just want to make sure there's no authentication because we're sending this from a secure server anyways. So it's going to be all good to go. We can click connect here and we're good to go. So <laughs> we've connected in make.com and OpenAI. Now we have access to all of these different um, these different, these different uh, workflows. And the reason why we have access to these three in specific is because heading back to make.com, we have the trigger set as on demand. So if you want access to new scenarios, you need to make sure to hit the trigger here change the run scenario from whatever it was to on demand. And as soon as it's on demand, you'll have access to the tool right here. We'll click add and we're good to go. In case you add more tools, you may just have to come back here and update this and then we're all set. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to load in that invoice one more time. I'm going to say, please pull out all of the line items and send it into our MCP server trigger to send data to Google Sheets. Okay, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to process the information, pull it out of the PDF using OCR. It's going to grab that information and we just need to approve it. It's going to send that over to our scenario over here and then it's going to wind up on our particular Google Sheet. Now, just a couple things I want to point out here is that you'll notice the pricing is certainly not perfect. It looks actually quite a bit off here. I don't think this is a problem per se with the MCP functionality. What I think this is a problem with is the OCR of Claude versus um, ChatGPT. One of them is just off. And what I mean by OCR, I mean the ability to look at like a PDF file and extract text. And so one of these is not good at extracting text and it's getting the, the information wrong here, okay? And so that's how we can set it up inside uh, ChatGPT, and we just need to click save and we can use this whenever we want. Now let's do the same thing, but this time we'll do it inside of Claude. And so what I want to do is I want to open a new tab here and I'm going to do make.com 
MCP server. And I wanna hit this first result on Google. And the reason why I'm coming over here is because I wanna show you how to do this in case you get stuck or in case, which you shouldn't because we're gonna go through every step, but also in case you wanna do this with cursor or they roll out other applications you wanna use those as well. And so inside here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna choose usage with Claude desktop, scroll down the page and it will give us this code here, okay? And so what I wanna do is copy this code and we just need to do one thing, which is kind of boilerplate, where we have to tweak our um, instance of our desktop Claude application. We're gonna come up here and go to settings, okay? And from within settings, we'll hit developer over here. We'll hit edit config file. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna open up your files here, specifically to this Claude underscore desk whatever dot config uh, JSON. We need to open this up and it's gonna open up in some tool that you have. In my instance, it's opening up in cursor. It could be VS code. If you don't have those, it should open up in a different application and that's totally fine. What we need to do is delete everything in here and we'll go back to Google Chrome and we just need to copy this one more time. And then we're going to come back and paste that in. Now you'll notice here we have this URL and we need to make some changes here. What we need to do specifically is we need to go back to make.com and grab this URL that we generated earlier. How you get there again is in your profile down here, go to MCP access and then copy this URL. And then we're going to paste this into this particular line here. Now just make sure to delete everything, but keep those quotation marks. We're gonna paste it in. And you notice that this quote went to a new line. We just need to back up so that everything is on one line again. We're good to go, that is it, we're done. Okay, we'll close cursor. And then what I wanna do is also close Claude because we need to reset it. I'm going to open Claude up again, okay? And once we've opened it up, what we, sh we should be good to go. And we know we're good if we hit this kind of like filter looking icon here and we have access to make.com and all of our scenarios down here. And so that is it. We can now access MCP from Claude to make.com. Now just circling back into make.com, there's two things that I wanna point out here. I don't wanna to spend too much time on the given workflows just cause it's not the purpose of this video, but I do wanna talk about the first node here and the last node over here here. So um, with this first node, you'll see that we have like all the information that we want to pull out from that MCP server. So we're essentially defining it here. Okay. And we can add in as much information as we want here. And how we do that is by hitting this input slash output uh, button down here. And what it's going to do is it's going to show us all of the variables that we want to collect. So on that invoice example, I wanted to collect the person's first name and last name and email and phone number and all that kind of stuff. So we enter in what we're looking for, and then we can add a description, which is just kind of giving additional context to what this is. Sometimes you want to pull something out. It might not know exactly what you're talking about. You can describe exactly what it is you're looking to pull out. It'll get better results every single time. We can go ahead and add another item down here. And maybe we wanted to pull out like for for instance, the date of the invoice. And we could choose the type and we could change it to like maybe date, a date field and say this is the date of the invoice or whatever, click save. And now if we head back into our first node here or module, we can add another item to pull out. We can define this as date for instance, and we could put in our date, okay, here and that we have access to it. now. Keep in mind, you don't need to have like this set multiple variables here. You could just literally add in these no, these these custom fields at any given module at any point in time. The only last thing that I want to point out here is just this last module here, which is returning a value. So we're essentially returning a Claude or ChatGPT uh, message. And what this message is saying is, hey, we've added the new row to the Google spreadsheet here. And we're just signaling to uh, Claude or ChatGPT, everything's good to go. It was success. We're good. Now, the last thing I want to talk about in this video is that they not only released an MCP server trigger, but they also released MCP client modules as well, which you can see right here. I don't want to spend too much time because I honestly would never use this. I kind of think in its present form, it's kind of useless 
course. I'm sorry to the make.com team out there, but that's just my opinion. I don't want to overhype it. In a nutshell, what this does is it provides MC MCP functionality so that you can interact from make.com to external AI agents, kind of the inverse of what we did with the server trigger. The only problem is, is that the functionality is very weak. So let's talk about this. First of all, the options that we have available are very limited. Like we only have maybe like 15 applications that we can use in the current present form. Now, in those particular apps, there's not a whole lot of useful functionality. Like for example, with Appify, which is a web scraping platform that allows, which has one main purpose, which is to web scrape different websites, it doesn't even give you the option to web scrape. And so to me, it's like kind of useless. And then when it does actually work, like for example, in this MCP client where we're calling Asana, it gives us the exact same tools that we could have had when we just used a generic Asana module. So there's literally no distinction between the MCP client over here and the regular old Asana mo uh, module here. And if that is going to be the case moving forward, then this doesn't provide, in my opinion, practically speaking, doesn't provide a whole lot of functionality outside of what you can just get when you use a generic app, like one of the thousands of apps listed here. And so I just wanted to kind of cover that really quickly, not spend too much time. Really appreciate you guys watching this video. If you found value in it, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And also, if you want to learn more about AI automation, highly recommend taking a look at my school community here, where there's two main goals to help people, first of all, automate up to 80% of their existing business. I give you the exact blueprints that I use to scale to seven figures and remove myself pretty much entirely from running the business and the second group of people is for those looking to create AI automation agencies to give you the roadmap that worked for myself. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a lovely day and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.